Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another watch me work on these blood splatter nails. This video is going to be broken up in two parts. In this video, I'm going to do these blood nails only. In the next video, I'll show you the design on the other hand. So this is my client's previous set. It's after I started filing stuff down and she actually broke a nail. Um, she was vacuuming again. I think that happened to her once before. Um, so she was missing a nail on that hand. Otherwise, the rest of these nails are like four or five weeks old. If you haven't watched the video over the old English nails I did, go ahead and check that out. It has some cool tips and tricks on how to draw um, on nails, um, doing letters and numbers on nails. So I'm first starting off by filing the design off. I'm using a coarse bit. It's a coarse safety bit from Poochie's Nails and I'm filing the design. I don't want to use the Red Baron bit I have from Atwood Industries. That'll be too aggressive. I'm not trying to debulk these nails. I'm only trying to take off the design and that's it. So this nail is actually cracked and in that crack you can get air in there, an air pocket, because it, you know, it's lifted in between the nail plate. So I wasn't able to file it off to where the crack is because it's in the middle of her nail plate. But I had to file the product down in order to get that air pocket out of there. You have to get air pockets out of nails. It can cause greenies. So, which is when bacteria grows on the nail plate and we don't want to get involved with that. So always get your air pockets out. And I know it looks bad. It does because the enhancement has lifted from the nail plate, it was forcefully lifted um, from the nail plate in that area. So you see there's layers of the nail plate that are, are damaged and peeling off and flaking away. And that's because it was hit. So it's perfectly normal. I mean, we don't want this to happen, but you can't help life. People hit nails. So in that scenario, this is what we're doing. And if you're not comfortable using the e-file that close to the natural nail, go ahead once you get close enough and take out your hand file. But you need to get that air pocket out. Next, I'm using the skiver bit and I'm removing the cuticle from the nail plate. That is the dead skin that grows on the nail plate. So I'm using the skiver bit and you want to use it as parallel to the nail plate as possible. If you hold it at an angle, you can cause a ring of fire. And I know it doesn't look like I'm holding it parallel, but when it comes to the side walls, they're at an angle pointed down. So that's why you get that angle at the sides. And you, you, you can use this bit forward or backwards. So I'm going across the nail plate and this is the cross cut bit. It's like a sanding band, but it's metal. And I just went across that to kind of buff the nail and remove any lifting product. That was just real quick. And next I'm going in with, this is the round bit from Atwood Industries, and I'm removing any remaining dead skin. So I have cleansed the nails, dusted them off, uh, cleansed the nails with acetone, and I'm going in with my gel bottle ink rubber base coat. And I'm applying that to the new growth area. It doesn't matter if you get it on the enhancement that's already there. I wouldn't apply this on the entirety of the enhancement. That'll just be a waste of product. Just apply it to the natural nail. If you get it on the enhancement that's already there, it's fine. But you don't have to worry about adhesion from your refill builder gel to the builder gel that's already there. So I'm using the Cosmetic Pink Builder from Light Elegance. Um, I've this is what I've been using on her nails to fill them for a long time now. And I'm just going in and applying this product. Builder Gel, I always praise it every time I use it in every video of hers. But if you're a nail tech starting out, I believe that you shouldn't be scared of Builder Gel. Get used to it. It's a beautiful product once you can understand that you just need a light touch. This is sped up, but I'm just using a light touch and it it just self levels so easily so beautifully and even if you have something that doesn't self level this cosmetic pink builder doesn't self level as much as most do it's so easy to file any inconsistencies away 
even if it doesn't. It's a beautiful product. You can see I'm applying a slip layer, which is like polishing it on. I'm not curing the slip layer. I'm taking a bigger bead and I'm putting it towards the cuticle area, feathering it out and blending it down. That's the end of our fill. If I feel like I need to add more for structure for apex, then I go ahead and do that all while it's still wet so the beads can flow into each other. If I have to build it up more like this finger because there was that air pocket, I had to file so much product, I'll go ahead and apply this in probably two, maybe three applications because I don't want to get the product so thick that it doesn't cure properly. And plus the thicker builder gel is, the hotter the heat spike usually is. And if y'all not if you're not aware, that's probably one negative to builder gel. A lot of it has a heat spike. There's ways to avoid it and limit it. I'll have to touch base on that, talk about it in another video. So if you ever do try it, <laughs> just be weary that it does get hot most of the time. So Selena Ryden has a good video about heat spikes. So if you know you're interested in learning more about that. She has a video out there in the meantime, in between times. So you can see I applied um, a thinner coat. I cured it. Then I applied another coat, a slip layer, a bigger bead, floated it down, and got it how I wanted it to be, structured it how I wanted it. Filed the nails into shape off video. Y'all, you, you know the drill. It's hard for me to record because of the way I do file and the way I flip the hands. I've Captured a glimpse of it in some videos. I couldn't even tell you which ones in the past. So you'll just have to watch them all, won't you? <laughs> so I did that off camera and now I'm using my cross cut bit to finish file the nail. Builder gel is so soft, I say this all the time, that you don't need a bit with flutes, which is your carbide bit that we generally use, um, especially if you're used to acrylic. That's probably the bit you use, whether it's a safety bit or not. It's usually carbide with flutes. It cuts away the product, basically. Crosscut bit is a diamond bit. It's metal, but it's textured like a sanding band. So we're sanding and buffing away the product. And that's all we need to do with Builder Gel because it's so soft. After finishing the um, filing, I go ahead and dust the nails off and I'm using this liquid latex. Now you can, need to make sure your client or yourself that you don't have a latex allergy before using this product because it is latex. It, it, it'll be called different names, um, but it's latex. So I asked my client, was she allergic to, to it? Of course she said no. And now I'm applying this as close to the cuticle area as possible, but then I'm also bringing it up some, and this is to protect her skin from the gel polish that we're gonna be using. I chose to go with gel polish instead of regular polish um, because I wanted this product to cure, and I figured I'd be getting big blobs, and big blobs of polish will take a long time to dry, and then if you top coat with gel over wet regular polish, you can get cracking. I didn't wanna come across that so I went ahead with gel. And you see, I took the gel polish and I diluted it with alcohol, just 70% alcohol. And I'm using a toothbrush and I'm just flicking these splatters on there. I'm trying to get it as inconsistent as possible. I don't want it to look patterned. I don't want it to look purposeful. I want it to look very random. I want to move the toothbrush in different ways, move it back and forth, get some drips, some big globs. And I'm using two different shades of red. The red I originally used was brighter, kind of like, I guess, fresh blood maybe. Um, the These reds kind of don't translate on camera exactly how they look in real life, but I think they look really good for blood colors. And you could even go one darker for like an old dried up blood, maybe like a little darker and brown, maybe a little bit. So you can see I'm just moving, I'm just flicking my wrist, I'm coming from the top of the nail, flicking it. I'm just trying to get some different type of splatter patterns. And then I'm taking the bristles of the brush and I'm touching the nail. And because we have that gel polish diluted, I mean, you're just going to have to play around and practice like how the percentage of alcohol mixed with gel polish. Just play around with it before you get a client or if you're doing it on yourself. Just, 
you know, take time because having it thicker can give you a certain type of splatter and having it thinner can give you another type. At this point, it's a thinner consistency and I'm just touching the bristles filled with product on the nail and I'm getting different effects and it's like pooling in certain areas. It's getting, you know, piled up. So it looks like it's been splattered. It's been touched. It's like started to cease up and clot up a little bit. So we're getting different effects on the nail. And I just thought it would be cute to add a little more blood to the tip of the stiletto nails. Like they stab somebody and this is where all the blood came from. I'm not caring at any time in between the layers of me flicking it on and doing everything I'm doing. I'm not curing and do not cure until you clean the skin. There's areas that the gel polish got on you see at her knuckles it got on there at the knuckles and i didn't want to cure it on her skin we want to be weary of overexposure with gel products so i cleanse it off um you can apply pro latex up to there but you know just kind of be cautious and make sure you clean it off soon after it's on there do not cure the gel polish on their skin so after I cleansed it off the exposed skin, I went ahead and cured it. After curing it, this is when I'm peeling the latex off after curing the gel polish. So I'm just making sure I get it off. At the end, I don't show a clip, but any that's in the kind of deep in the sidewalls in the cuticle area, I use my skiver bit and filed off any of those droplets. So I'm going and I'm matting out the nails because we like the contrast that the um the nude she had the cosmetic pink builder had in contrast with the wetness of the gel polish and that is when i took on a tedious task <laughs> of filling in with either a daughter tool or a small brush filling in all the blood droplets with top coat now i use the vetro gold line top coat you probably want to use something that's a little bit thicker so when you apply it how I am, it doesn't run everywhere and disperse. And I'm going in and tracing and dotting in as much of the blood spatter as possible so it can have that contrast. It can look wet on the nail while the background of the nail is matte. I think it's worth as tedious as it is. It's, it's not that bad, but it's well worth it. So this is just me filling in all the blood splatter on the nails. And I do want to add that I'm working one finger at a time. So I'll go ahead and fill the blood in on this finger, go ahead and cure it in the light, work on the other hand in the meantime, and then move on to the next finger, just so I don't give the top coat time to run. So I would recommend doing that. This is our final look on the blood nails. I love the contrast of the matte with the shiny. It was well worth the tediousness of filling in all those spots. This look is easy overall. It's just more messy and tedious than it is difficult. So please keep a lookout for the video on the other half of the hand. It's just gonna be the design since I did the refill and prep in this video. But I just love how that spider looks. So I will be posting that video. I don't know when, but I will. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Bye.